My name is Malcolm Riverstock, and you are very welcome to this week's episode of A Handy History, where we come to you from the beautiful island of Ireland, the land of saints and scholars. On this week's program, we will be travelling the highways and byways of Ireland, leaving no town or village unturned in our search for never-before-heard-of facts from the coalface of history. Hello, Maureen, and thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Can you tell us about that eventful morning back in 1916 when you met Pollock Pierce for the first time? I can, of course. I was in the kitchen here making a bit of breakfast as usual when I heard an unmerciful rumbling coming from outside. I stuck my head out the window when I saw this young fella sauntering past and I shouted at him, Where do you think you're going? Me, says he. Yes, you, says I. Off to change the course of Irish history forever, says he. You won't be changing anything on an empty stomach, says I. I can hear your stomach rumbling from in here. Come into the kitchen and I'll give you the tastiest fry up you've ever had. Tell us a little about Pollock Pierce. What kind of a man was he? Hungry. But he must have eaten, let me see, 30, no, 35 sausages that morning. 35 sausages? Easily. And he loved drinking tea. Must have walked his way through 16 pots of tea, swilling down the sausages and the pudding and the toast he was. And you were alone, were you? There was nobody helping you with the cooking. No, I was all of me lonesome here, but I'm not afraid of a bit of hard cooking. And well, I can tell you, Parrick Pierce put me through my paces that morning. And then when he was done... He slept? Not at all, no. I heard the banging and the booming. And didn't I turn to him and say, Ah, they're letting off the bangers and the fireworks across the road again. And he says to me, They're no bangers nor fireworks, madam. That's the sound of war. And then? And then he was up on his feet like a shot. Are you done, says I? I am, says he. And you're a goodly woman for feeding me, he says. I'm off now to change the course of history. Are you indeed now, I thought to myself. And that was that, was it? Out the door and off to battle. He did go out the door, but he came straight back in. And he asked me if I'd make a batch of sausage sandwiches for all the lads down in the GPO. They'd be stuck down there and not a rasher among them. So you fed them too? I did indeed. Well done for playing your part in the rising. No bother. Would you like a little bit of breakfast while you're here? No, Maureen, I have already eaten. Dingle is a jewel in the ring of Kerry, and it is there that we meet local celebrity Timmy Foley, also known as the Dolphin Whisperer. Good morning, Joe, you, and you're most welcome inside my fishing boat here in Dingle Bay. My name? I'm known locally here as Trawler Tim because I'm always out and about in my boat. My real name is actually Timmy Foley. You want to know about fungi, is it? Well, no, I could talk about fungi the dolphin all day long. Not a lot of people know that I was actually fungi's best friend. Yes, he said it himself, his best friend. I used to go down to see a fungi maybe three, four times a day. Should I bring him down his breakfast in the morning, two boiled eggs, then his lunch, a toasted ham and cheese sandwich, and he'd have a plate of spuds for his dinner. And he loved nothing better than a mug of hot chocolate before he went off to bed. But a fungi was actually a gale goer, oh, he spoke the most beautiful Irish. He'd always be messing with me every morning. He'd spring up out of nowhere and shout, Conesata to Timmy Foley. <laughs> he'd frighten the life out of me. I'd eventually catch sight of him and he'd be splitting his sides laughing, rolling around in the water. I'd reply, Tom, come off, fungi, you mess are you. And he'd be dancing and lipping around in the water. And he'd often come up and he'd be circling around the boat and looking in and sniffing good oh. He'd ask me straight out every day, Timmy, have you any food inside in that boat at all at all? The clever fellow be after smelling whatever I had. And on this day I had four donuts I'd bought above in Nancy Riley's bakery. Two of them custard and two of them jam. I'd say to him, now very serious, I've only the one donut for you today now, Fungi. Oh, he'd get wicked cross then with me, knowing I had four in the bag. The long and the short of it was, he'd end up scoffing the four of them and the paper bag and all. 
Fungi loved sugar. Oh, he'd be leaping up out of the water after the sugar and he'd be posing for photos and signing autographs for tourists. I miss him something terrible myself. I can always remember him singing. He could sing anything from I swam it my way to rolling in the deep. But he used to sing this song all the time. I've been a wild dolphin for many's the year And I've spent all my money on ice cream at the pier But now I'm returning with a love of the shore And I never will play the wild dolphin no more And tis no, nay, never, good man Fungi No, nay, never, no more Will I play the wild dolphin in Dingle no more. Ah, he was a great singer, Fungi, and his likes will never be seen here again. Right, so, I better go off and catch a few fish. Twas lovely chatting to your Malcolm, and the best of luck with your documentary. If I'm fortunate enough to catch sight of the great Fungi again, I'll be sure to tell him you're asking for him. Shlan Malcolm, Shlan Awalia. You are delighted to have with us a very special guest. Someone who I've been told will be a familiar face to many of you, especially those fans of rock and roll. Yes, it's frontman to the almost international band To You. It's rocker Zono. Yeah, well, actually, like all good things, Malcolm, it started in the shower. Oh, right. And what shower might that be, Zono? Oh, it was the shower back in my house where I grew up, you know. There was a lot of us in the family, 15 brothers and 16 sisters, so getting into the bathroom in the morning was a bit of a trauma, you know. So when I got in there, I made the most of it. And there I was one day, washing under the old armpits, when suddenly I, I heard this amazing beat coming from somewhere. So I pulled back the shower curtain, and there, sitting on the jacks, was my old mucker, Barry, banging away on a few pots and pans and wow man did it sound cool and then i looked over <laughs> at the taps and there was the sledge harmonizing away with the hot and cold it was amazing and then of course oh mcadam popped his big head in and there he was with his double bass and that was it that was the moment that was when the rock and roll was born and there was another famous band in your class as well is that right no no, there was no other bands in our class. I don't think there's any other bands in the whole school, actually. Oh, really? I, I thought you were in school with a certain famous band. Bono, The Edge, Larry, hey? Bono, The Edge and Lad. No! I, I don't know. I've never heard of them, Malcolm. I think you might be in some kind of a parallel universe there, you know? No, no, no. We were the only musos in Mount Temple at that time. That's for certain. Hmm, really? Because, um... Some of your song titles are remarkably similar to theirs. Really? Oh, um, which ones would they be? Oh, well, let me see. There's, um, I Still Haven't Found the Shower Door. Oh, it's a great tune. With or Without the Shower. I love that song, man. Where the Showers Have No Name. Oh, man, the fans just adore that tune. I mean, it's quite an extensive list. I could go on. No, 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 it's fine. But, you know, Malcolm, they're all classic tunes. They came out of me, you know. They're all originals. They came from my heart and my, my, uh... Your shower, Zonu? Yeah, my shower, Malcolm. My, my shower, yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Indeed. <laughs> um, thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, Bono. Uh, it's... Zono, actually, Zono, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. You know where it's going. Paddy, it is a delight to meet you. Could you just tell me a little bit about how you yourself are connected to the patron saint of Ireland? Ah, oh, no, let me see for you now, Malcolm. I suppose he'd be uh, my great, 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 ah, oh, great, ah, oh, great, yeah, great, great, that's great, 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 lovely, Great, great grandfather. There'll be the connection there, you know. And tell me, Paddy, has there been any genealogical research done on your claim or anything scientific to go along with it? Okay, yeah, the head. Oh, yeah, I have a piece of paper here, you know. Hang on. 
Three, this is why the rage. Paddy is related to St. Patrick. There you go, there's the proof there now. See, have a leave it there now yourself, good man, Malcolm. And yes, true enough, written here in Byro it says, Paddy is related to St. Patrick. And we both have the same name. His name was Patrick, my name's Patrick. He was a saint, but I'm Paddy. But we both have the same name on the birth certificate, you know. Uh, yes, could I, Paddy, has it ever been questioned or possibly refuted that you might not technically be related to St. Patrick just because you both have the same name? And that you wrote it down on a piece of paper that you are related to St. Patrick? Oh, no. So who would refute the thing like that? That'd be a stupid thing to do. So look, don't no, leave and I'm wearing this hat, sure. Paddy, are you suggesting that that hat you're wearing is in fact the hat of St. Pat Patrick? Oh, aye, it is. It is indeed. This tail is the same, very same hat that he wore when he got rid of all the snakes out of Ireland. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is it. The one and only. Paddy, I am amazed. Ah, no. <laughs> I'm only joking with you. This isn't the real one. This is only a copy. I have the real one at home under the bed. <gasps> oh, no, I shouldn't have said that. My mammy's always telling me, don't tell people where the Harry St. Patrick is. What if somebody breaks into the house and takes it? Huh? Indeed, indeed. Uh, but, Paddy, shouldn't that hat possibly be in a museum? Maybe the National Museum of Ireland? Oh, no. Why would you do a thing like that? No, no, no. I have that hat there now for special occasions, and I wear it every time there's a special occasion going on. Um, special occasions such as, um... Well, you know, Fridays. I like to wear it every Friday. Paddy, thank you. Thank you so much. You are a remarkable man. Oh, no, no worries. You enjoy your stay here now with us, Malcolm. You have a lovely time. I have to get back to work now. Gotta get on with the milk round. Bye. We are honoured to be welcomed this week by the President of Ireland to his residence, Aras and Uchteron. You are most welcome, Malcolm. And might I just say it is an honour to have you as a guest here at Aras and Uchteron. Well, firstly, it is a great pleasure for me to be the big fellow of Ireland. You know, the head honcho, the skipper, the gaffer, the kingpin, the big cheese, the big wig, the governor. Yes, Sabina and I love dogs, and it sometimes feels as if Orisonuctoron is actually a giant doghouse. Look, here comes Broad now. <laughs> who's a lovely fellow? I said, who's the lovely fellow? Give me the paw, Broad. Broad, give me the paw now. You're making me look weak on camera in front of the people of Ireland. Food, 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 food. I'll rustle you up a triple-decker ham sandwich as soon as I've concluded my interview with Malcolm. Food, 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 food. Now, now, young man, stop that. You are being a very rude doggy in front of our guest. Walkies, walkies, walkie, 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 walkies. We'll make up your mind, Broad. Is it food or walkies you want? Food, food, food. Yes, but remember what I said. Malcolm first, then food. And if you're the best boy in Ireland, I'll take you for a quick walkies around the Phoenix Park. Is that OK now, Grumpy? Does that suit your needs? Yes, yes, yes. My sincere apologies, Malcolm. Now, where were we? Well, now, I have always been a huge fan of the great poets down through history, and I'm also quite fond of rap music. I'm the president of Ireland, can't you see? Higgins is the name, but call me Michael D. Speaking poetry on every track and mix. I'm by far the greatest Whig in politics. Defending what I say to commentators. I've had so many battles with my haters. Telling me my beliefs are out of line. But I've been turning up since 1969. Food, food, food. I'm afraid, Malcolm, we'll have to conclude there. I better rustle up some grub for this fellow, or he'll keep going on at me. Gurav meal of Mahogat, Agaslan Gafol. Pull the door out after you. Food, food, food.